Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to create a graph in Unity. We're going to add some buttons to manually modify our graph. Let's begin. So I have my graph here and it is showing some values and changing the visual types. Now let's add some buttons to be able to manually select what visual type we want. So let's go into the editor, onto the UI, onto the window graph, let's start off by creating a new button. So create an empty game object and let's name this bar chart button. Let's add an image for the background. So UI image, this will be our background. And let's add another one for our icon. So the background, make it in black and like that. For the icon, I have an icon in here for the bar chart icon. Let's make the size a bit smaller and like that. Okay, this is our button. Now let's add the button UI script. This script is part of the CodeMonkey utilities that you can grab for free from UnityCodeMonkey.com. This script helps me capture mouse events on this particular game object. So for example, I have the hover behavior type. I'm going to set it to change color. I want to change the icon color. When it's normal, let's leave it on pure white. And when the mouse is over, let's make it tinted in green. All right, let's position our button in this corner in here. Now let's duplicate it and this will be the line graph button and let's change the icon for the line graph icon and keep everything else the same. We still got the button UI changing the color on mouse over. Okay, so now that our buttons are set up, let's go to the code. So here on the code, let's go and find the reference for our buttons. So that's on the transform.find and we call the first one bar chart button and get the component of type button UI. And on the click func, which is the function triggered when clicked on the button, it will execute this action and this action will do something. So now we need to make a function that only takes a visual type and keeps the exact same values. So in order to do that, we need to first cache all the values that were used the last time this function was called. So let's set up some member variables to store all of this. Okay, so we now have member variables to cache the values that were used on the last time the function was called. So now let's store them in here. So let's store the this.valueList equals our value list and do the same for all the others. Now for the max visible amount, we're going to store it after validating it, which will make it easier to change afterwards. So we are now storing the values whenever the function is called. That means we can now go up here and make another function that will only receive the graph visual. So a private void sat graph visual and inside we're going to receive a parameter of type i graph visual graph visual okay and we're going to call the show graph function using our cached value so the value list then we're going to use this graph visual so in order to keep things clean let's use this dot value list this dot that and this dot max visible and so on. Okay, so we can now use this function to only modify the graph visual. So that's what we're going to call up here. When we got the bar chart button, then we're going to call set the graph visual using our bar chart visual. And then we have the button for the line graph button, which will set it to the line graph visual. All right, so let's test. All right, so here's our graph being displayed as a bar chart. Our buttons, as you can see, the column changes on mouse over, so that's very nice. And now if I click on the line graph, yep, there you go, it changed to use the line graph visual, and again, click back, and I can swap back and forth. Great, so we can now manually change the visual representation of our graph. Now let's set up some buttons to change the visible amount. So back in the editor in here, let's duplicate this and add another button on the side. For this one, let's call it decrease the visible amount button. And on the right side, we're going to have a increase visible amount button. So let's set the icons, a minus icon and a plus icon. Okay. Now let's head to the code. And in here, let's also capture those buttons. So first of all, the decrease visible amount button, which will do something different from this. And then we have the increase visible amount button. So now we need functions to increase and decrease the visible amount. So let's go in here and make a private void. First of all, let's do the increase the 
visible amount. And inside, we're just going to call the main function. So again, show graph. We're going to show it using this dot val list, this dot graph visual, and then for the max visible amount, use this dot max visible amount. And since we are increasing, then increase it by one. Then again, this dot get access label x and the y. All right, now let's copy this and make the decrease the visible amount. And instead of increasing by one, we decrease it by one. Okay. Now up here, let's call these functions. So on the increase, call the increase, on the decrease, call the decrease. All right, let's test the code. Okay, there we go. It is currently showing all of the values in our graph. So if I hit minus, yep, there you go. It starts off at day two, goes until day 15. And I can do it, do it. And again, it is only showing the last six days on our graph. And I can also increase and it goes until it shows the entire thing. So we can now modify the max visible amount. So now let's finish it by adding functions to modify the labels. So in here, let's make a function to set the label for the X and the Y. So first of all, a private void set get axis label X. And in here, we're going to receive what we're using for the label X. So it's exactly the same thing in here. And we're going to call very much the same as in here, call using the cached values. And instead of using this dot get axis label X, use the one called in this function. Then do another function to modify the Y. Okay, so we now have two functions to modify the axis labels. So now let's go into the editor. In here, we're going to make two buttons for swapping, let's say between dollars and euros. So let's duplicate it. Here, let's say it's the dollar button. And on the right side, we have the euro button. Set the icons. Okay, our buttons are set up. Now in our code, let's go up here, grab the references. So first we have the dollar button, and then we have the euro button. We're going to use the set get axis label Y. We're going to leave the X as is, since that one is showing the day, so leave that one. We're going to modify the Y, and for the dollar, we're essentially going to send the same function that we're using. So this one, which takes a float and returns the dollar sign, and then it rounds off the value in that Y position. And then for the Euro, let's show as Euros, and we're going to take the value and divide it by an exchange rate. So let's say 1.18F, and then round out the whole thing. All right, so let's test. Okay, here's the graph. Here you can see all the values on our Y axis. And if I click on dollar, nothing changes. Still says the exact same thing. And on euro, and yep, there you go. Everything was converted into euros. So in here you see dollars and euros. So we can easily swap our labels and we could, if we want to do the same thing on the X axis. All the other buttons still work. So we can show less values or show them all. So, and we can still swap between line graph and bar chart. So there you have it. We took our graph and added some buttons to manually modify how our data is displayed in the graph. In the next video, we're going to add some tool tips to display the exact value of each data point. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from intcodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.